Good morning. It's 9.30. It's Tuesday, April 19th, although it looks more like January 19th. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, please joining us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> We'll start with a prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we beseech your divine guidance in this meeting. Keep us ever mindful of our obligation. Grant us, dear Lord, wisdom, tolerance, and courage that we may well serve our county and fulfill our trust. Amen. Amen. All right. And we've got uh, minutes. <clears throat> I will make a motion to approve the April 12th minutes. Second. Moved and second. Any discussions or changes? Hearing that, roll call, please. Swedek? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Hambly? Yes. All right. Uh, open up for public comment. Anybody here regarding any of the items on the agenda? Hearing none, we'll proceed with the resolutions. We have the County Engineer's Office, Dan Becker. Good morning. Good morning. This is great weather. I don't know what you're know, talking about. Snow plows, uh, salt out. Yeah, this is great. This is good weather. This keeps us in, in business. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, I have two resolutions for your consideration today. Uh, the first one is a resolution accepting and awarding the 2022 Medina County Chip and, uh, Chip and Seal Road Bid. And the second resolution is limiting, uh, li lifting the weight limits uh, for improved county roads and township roads. And then our weekly permits. Make a motion to approve the two resolutions. Second. Moved and second. Any discussions? Roll call, please. Swedek? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Hambly? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Dan. you very much. All right. Jeremy Sinkow, our sanitary engineer. Good morning. Have morning. Flannel, flannel shirt today? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. This <laughs> <laughs> is the season, right? Yeah, I guess. Um, three resolutions for consideration today. Uh, the first is authorizing change order number one for the Medina County Sanitary Sewer Rehabilitation Project 2021. This is to add four additional sewer lines. To, to be lined up. We had some root problems that we did just recently discovered. The second is declaring the necessity of the 2021 home sewage treatment system repla repair replacement project and authorizing the sanitary engineer to commence advertising for bids. And the third is authorizing the sanitary engineer to enter into an agreement with Jones and Henry engineers for professional design services. This is for a water main replacement job along Marks Road between Grafton and Boston. I'll make a motion to approve the three resolutions. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Swedek? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Hambly? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Jeremy. Jeremy. All right. Holly Murin, our Human Resources Director. Good morning. Good morning, Holly. Good morning. On our personal changes resolution today, we have two new hires, one in sanitary and one at job and family mm -hmm. services. 10 rate increases, three at county home, three at sanitary, three at office for older adults, and one in transit, a return from leave in transit, and a retirement in job and family services. Second resolution is approving a new three-year contract between Teamsters Local 293 and Medina County Job and Family Services. And the third is the new contract between Teamsters Local 293 and Medina County Maintenance Repair Workers. I will make a motion to approve the three resolutions. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Good job on getting these wrapped up. Excellent. Oh, yes. <laughs> Good work. Good work. Roll call, please. Swedek? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Hambly? Yes. Thank you. All right. Very good. Thanks, Holly. Thank Next, Scott Miller, our county administrator. Good morning, Scott. Good morning. I have three resolutions for you today. The first resolution is authorizing the county administrator to negotiate gas rates for the county gas aggregation program in county buildings. Um, as you know, Volunteer Energy filed for bankruptcy. And we're in the same situation as we were with the electric where the prices change hourly. So if we're given a price um, through one of the, through the negotiations that the bids are received, um, you know, it could change, you know, in an hour. So I need to be okay. able to um, lock in the best price at, at the time. And, and Scott, you've extended the date for accepting bids? We did. We did. There, we're still waiting on two, and there was another company that showed interest, mm -hmm. so we went ahead and gave them until Friday. Right. This, this coming Friday? Yeah. yeah. This, okay. okay. Yeah. Thanks. Super. Um, <clears throat> second resolution is approving an agreement with Lewis Land Professionals, Inc. Uh, this is for professional design services for a shooting range to be utilized by the Medina County Sheriff's Office and local law enforcement. 
Um, this obviously has been dis discussed um, over the past um, two years, actually. I think it started under Sheriff Miller. So we're going to go ahead and enter into a contract with Lewis Land to um, put together the, the concept mm -hmm. and the pricing. And the third resolution is authorizing the advertiser for proposals for gallery benches to be installed in the new Medi Medina County Courthouse. Um, in talking to some of the furniture companies, uh, they said we would be better off to go direct for the benches because they would have to also bid those out because most of the companies don't, or the companies that we're talking don't deal with gallery benches. Or hmm. um, so, so we're going to go ahead and uh, bid out the benches, um, and this and so it will be advertised starting tomorrow. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the three resolutions. Second. Moved and second. Any discussions? Roll call, please. Swedek? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Campbell? Yes. Thank you. Next, Amy Lyon Gallen, our assistant county administrator. That wasn't me. Good morning. Good morning, Amy. I have 11 resolutions for your consideration this morning. The first one is amending the appropriation measure resolution. The second is amending the 2022 appropriations resolution by transferring appropriations. The third is revenue adjustments for various funds. The fourth is the creation of the Sheriff's OCJS body camera grant fund and authorizing appropriations. The fifth is creation of the information technology fund and authorizing appropriations. The sixth is authorizing the county auditor to transfer funds from various county department accounts to the gasoline rotary fund. The seventh is authorizing the commissioners to enter into an agreement with the statewide consortium of county law library resource boards. This is on behalf of the Medina County Law Library Resources Board. The eighth is deeming a portion of the county's coronavirus local fiscal recovery fund payment uh, due to the reduction in the county's general revenue as due to the COVID-19 public health emergency during the American Rescue Plan Act's period of performance and declaring an emergency. What this does is allow that $10 million to be recognized as the <coughs> federal treasury has deemed that the allowable uh, contribution uh, to constitute revenue reduction. Mm -hmm. Okay. The ninth resolution is self-certifying $50,000 as the micro-purchase threshold for use of federal funds. This allows, uh, for example, the uh, compliance for the ClickShare um, equipment that was purchased for the remote communications and so forth, uh, subject to having to social distance and maintain business during COVID. The tenth resolution is allowing expenses of county officials. And the 11th and final resolution for the finance department this week is approval of claims for the week in the amount of $1,439,965.94. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the 11 resolutions. Second. Moved and second. Any discussions? Roll call, please. Swedek? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Hambly? Yes. Thank you. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, next, our department updates. Richard Nelson, our chief building official. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Richard. So, well, the overall value of residential is down a little bit compared to last year, in spite of the fact that there was cool, not a lot more, but actually more new home starts compared huge. to last year. I think there was there was a lot of um, moderate or modest type homes started, and uh, there was no no big ones in there to skew the number. Um, so, yeah, so and so the overall value is down, but it's well carried by the uh, value of the commercial work. That's that's five times what it was last year at this time. Easily five times over. But um, again, so the the average cost moving down of new homes was a little bit less, and that brought the overall average year to date down to three hundred and seventy-five thousand. Last year it was at. 397,000. Um, yeah, and you can see on the bar graph, new home starts is on like a four-year high. 
And second page, our uh, monthly receipts is up. Uh, largely based on all the commercial work. Last page lists quite a few, well, it lists all the commercial projects that are in the, that have already been permitted and that are well underway. And there's a lot more to come still too, to be permitted. Uh, other than that, we're doing good. Uh, the timing of adding that additional plan examiner was perfect just in time uh, ha having that third person has allowed us to keep our commercial turnaround time you know within about a three week time period so that that worked out excellent and commercials uh, and residential is doing good too Tom's uh, keeping up with those you know so we're at, at about a three four day turnaround on the residential good. Uh, that's essentially all I have, but I, I consistently fail to mention to the public that this report gets put on our website uh, Usually later today, but uh, uh, this month it'll probably get put on tomorrow and uh, So that you know the public can see all this too That's about all I have this morning. Richard we made some uh, changes to the uh, uh, the policies I think back in like January or thereabouts. Correct. Are, are all those flowing through okay? Any any concerns with any of the changes? Uh, there's not really been too much concern, although I, on our uh, fee schedule, the plan exam fee, uh, I failed to include one of the building types. Uh, so that got a little bit odd, but, uh, uh, but other than that, it's worked out quite fine. The mechanical people, of course, are uh, benefiting from that change uh, because that reduced quite a few of their permit costs mm -hmm. on the uh, on the mechanical permits. So, do we need to make and a change, additional change, to accommodate the one area that you mentioned? No, no, it it it's still it's still working out. The whole plan review thing. Uh, many buildings are mixed uses, mixed. Uh, uh, you know, there's some warehouse, there's some office, some factory, all in one big mm -hmm. building. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's uh, it's pretty gray anyhow. Okay. So no, it, it's working out already. Right. Excellent. Very good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Very thank good. you. Hey, thank, thank you so you. much. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, Bethany Detler, Economic Development Director. Good morning. I know good you morning, always Bethany. have good news. <laughs> yeah, mostly. Mostly. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> so just to maybe put a little flesh around Richard's report, <clears throat> 2022 has been a very busy year so far with uh, Medina County Economic Development activity. Each month this year, we have come closer and closer to topping the entire amount of capital investment that we saw in all of 2021. Um, in last year, there was $264 million of new capital committed in the county. Through the end of March, employers expanding in Medina County have committed to investing just over $248 million. Mm -hmm. And um, we've got some major projects in the pipeline for this year that have not yet been finalized. But I think we can expect to add at least another $100 million to this year's capital investment figures. And that would truly really be a record in the 30 some years that we've uh, that we've been doing economic development. Um, and so far, the, the companies that we're working with have plans to add 400 new jobs. So I expect that number to um, greatly increase as well. And over the next couple of weeks, we have some great celebrations because sometimes we just don't take the time to mm -hmm. stop and breathe and acknowledge what we're actually doing. So um, we'll be celebrating the expansion of the fiber network out in the western part of the mm -hmm. county later mm -hmm. this month, uh, as well as a ribbon cutting for a co an Austrian company that bought a building in Valley City, and they're creating 150 new jobs. Now, that was announced last year, but this year we get to celebrate. Uh, in this first quarter, we've met with nearly 70 companies so that we can understand their business needs and discuss their opportunities for growth. Uh, that includes conversations we've had with executives during the process of conducting our annual reviews for the community reinvestment area tax abatement agreements, uh, and those, those were all filed by the end of March. After you approve their recommendations by those housing councils, 
um, you know, obviously we filed, but I wanted to share just a few highlights from those meetings. Many of the companies that we talked to are expecting continued growth in 2022. They've either added new positions already or they plan to create new jobs and those might not necessarily be counted in the 400 I shared with you. Some also indicated that they were getting tight on space and may need to expand in the next couple of years. I feel like a lot of companies are trying to get that done now sooner rather than later, not only because of supply chain issues, they've got to get it on order, uh, but because of what they're seeing within the interest rate environment. So that's the good news. Uh, the bad news is, there's always bad news, um, most companies are still experiencing great challenges with supply chain issues, uh, workforce availability, increasing wages, and now the increasing co cost of uh, energy and fuel, as you heard from Scott. Um, so you've heard from our reports over the years that we are engaging in a number of initiatives to deal with these workforce uh, situations, including partnerships with our local schools. So we look back on the past school year, which is coming to an end, and we've had a dozen, probably around a dozen very successful events with our high schools. They've included engineering expos and career days at the high schools and a very, uh, very successful um, uh, career fair at the uh, Medina County Career Center. Um, and it gave businesses a chance to really connect with students that they could potentially hire and are indeed hiring. Uh, building that pipeline of future workforce is one of the reasons that we're now operating the pre-apprenticeship program I believe you've heard about earlier this uh, this year. As a quick update, May 3rd and 4th is our very first Workforce Academy uh, that we've organized under a grant from the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services. We've got some great speakers lined up to teach classes to students who need to meet graduation requirements. And so there's really going to be a focus on those soft skills that, uh, that businesses are going to find very valuable in, in new graduates that they want to hire. A couple of other initiatives, just a quick update on our legislative advocacy. The Ohio Senate Ways and Means Committee had a fifth hearing on House Bill 123, which would overhaul how the post-94 tax abatement program would work. That hearing involved uh, accepting new written testimony, mostly in opposition. If that does get voted out of the Senate floor, it would raise from 50% to 75% the amount of a tax abatement that could be approved by a city or county without school board approval. Uh, we are on record as opposing the bill, but I understand the County Commissioners Association recently moved from interested party to uh, uh, opponent or, or proponent. So we'll have to see how quickly that moves from here. But that would have an impact on how we operate that program. Uh, just a quick update on NOACA. As a stakeholder on NOACA's Regional Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy Committee, I wanted to share that the recommended strategies have been drafted. Those ideas are now going through various reviews, both in public forums, and they're also working their way through NOACA's internal committee. Uh, the public comment period will open this Friday for about a month, so we should see a draft coming up soon. I assume it'll be on NOACA's webpage. Uh, I was pleased to see that the strategies will include the priorities that Medina County brought to the table, uh, including uh, focus on workforce development and population attraction to the entire region. A couple of updates on some events that are coming up that you'll want to get on your calendar. In 2022, our Made in Medina County programming is now involving support for both skilled trades in the construction industry, as well as continuing to promote manufacturing in our community. We are taking the show on the road this year and our steering committee is firming up details for these roadshow events, which will take place in five different industrial parks from July through early September. So these events will involve judge competitions, um, which will engage manufacturing, our business leaders, community supporters, and students. Uh, we're going to be soon advertising the opportunity to bring a team to the event. Um, so it'll be some great networking, uh, learning opportunities, um, and some competition. And I know you all are very competitive people. Um, and I promise <laughs> that uh, this will be unlike any other networking event or golf outing you might attend this summer. There will be a cutting putting contest, but it will be very unusual. So you've got to sign up and um, come on and, okay. and find out. Uh, the Medina County Business Awards, we are now accepting nominations for our 2022 Medina County uh, Business Awards program that will take place on Tuesday, October 25th in Westfield Center. So the award categories are Business Growth, Capital Investment, Community Advocate, and Entrepreneur of the Year. To submit a nomination, all we need is the name of a business or individual and the category for which they're nominated, and we'll set up the 
interview, so anybody can nominate a business. So uh, please see me if you're interested. Uh, one final announcement, our Economic Development Corporation's annual meeting will take place on the evening of Tuesday, May 17th at the Galaxy in Wadsworth. We expect a great turnout to hear from Charles Marshall, not the construction guy. Um, this Charles is a motivational business comedian who is presenting a program called Take Two Chuckles and Call Me in the Morning. So you should have received an invitation, but uh, please let our office know if you can join us. And that's my report. Thank oh, you. I was going to make a, mo uh, a comment on the House, House Bill uh, 123, which is the CRA legislation. The CCAO board did uh, go from uh, interested party to proponent. It was, uh, I'll just say, sitting on the board, it was a, a, a divided board. Uh, there were some of us that uh, maintained that, uh, although we do appreciate the bill sponsor, made some major changes uh, to the legislation. I think large, large part uh, due to the... Uh, I think the due criticism and the due concerns that you had raised, and so they made some significant changes, but they still kept some significant uh, portions of it, such as the 75% uh, before a school board would be involved in the uh, tax abatement uh, discussions. So um, there was a handful of us that uh, opposed going from uh, interested party to proponent, but um, the majority won, and so the, the association is still um, is moved to in favor of it uh, with those changes. Um, but as I reminded, the I did when I was down at reception, did run into uh, uh, Representative Frazier and did remind him that Medina County was still soundly opposed uh, to um, the legislation. Out of curiosity, was the vote regionalized? Like, were certain areas of the state more proponents for it? Uh, the, the more urban counties were uh, not in favor of the changes, I would say. Yeah, yeah. It, it presents a very challenging situation for our schools and the relationships mm -hmm. between our schools and our cities who are trying to attract businesses. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to make it easy on any of us. Right. Right. I, I, for, fortunately, it's going to be a, a, a standard that will uh, you could still require them. We could still require that, but you'll be then competing against other other counties that don't. So, in other words, the, it'll be a lower standard, basically. Is the, uh, well, and I think probably yeah. as a result of some of that publicity, you yeah. know, we're, we're working on attracting businesses here, and, right. you know, they're now making demands. Well, we, we need 100% tax abatement, and I'm like, well, the community only has a 50% program. So there's, there's pressure being put on our communities that um, is not helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it still has to go to the floor, and, of course, the governor has to still yeah. <laughs> sign it. So we'll, we'll see how that Keep goes. An eye on yeah. That. All right. The schools are still adamantly opposed to it. Yes, I will just say definitely. education still is. So we'll see how that works out. All the, right. pro the warehouse project in Westfield Township. Yes. So they've moved a lot of dirt, but I don't see it on Richard's uh, list. It's, it's not uh, permitted yet, but it's, you know, we have it in, in our in our system. Okay. So it's just your 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 list here. Um, Does it include that? is is projects that have been permitted and Correct. approved? Okay, but you do have it. Right. All right. But from our perspective, the Port Authority provided a, a, made an offer of an incentive for the program, so right. we're, we're counting it as if it were moving forward. Okay, excellent. Got it. All right, very good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. All right. All right, we do have a uh, commissioner's resolution uh, proclaiming April 2022 as Child Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month. Whereas the United States of America recognizes each April as Child Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month, and Medina County agencies and organizations work together to heighten awareness and draw attention to the need for preventing child abuse in our communities. And whereas the Children's Center of Medina County was established in 2005 to enhance the coordination and implementation of special services required by children of sexual abuse and their non offending. Uh, caretakers and whereas Medina County Job and Family Services is charged with investigating allegations of child abuse and neglect and providing foster care to those children who cannot remain safely in their own homes and to provide any services needed to meet the emotional needs of the abused and neglected children. And whereas in 2021, there were 696 child abuse cases investigated, whereas child abuse and neglect not only directly harms children, but also increases the likelihood of long-term physical and mental health problems, alcohol and substance abuse, continued family violence, and criminal behavior. And whereas child abuse and neglect can be reduced by making sure each family has the support they need in raising their children in a safe, nurturing environment, and Medina County remains steadfast in its commitments to the safety and security of our children and families. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Medina County, Ohio, hereby proclaims April 2022 as 
Child Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month and recognizes the significance of pinwheels as symbols of child abuse prevention, representing wonder, hope, and happiness, things all children deserve. Additionally, pinwheels communicate the need for prevention efforts, as well as the important message that citizens, community agencies, faith groups, medical facilities, and businesses all have a part to play in eliminating child abuse. I will make a motion to approve. Second. Moved and second. Any discussions or comments? There is a pinwheel walk. Um, on the square Sunday. here in Medina on Sunday. I think it starts at 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock, yep. And um, there will be 696 pinwheels. And I, I think all of us are going to be in attending and right. be there. And hopefully, and no other looks like this. It'll be sunshine. I think the forecast shows 75, 75 and, sunny. and sunny. So just as, that should, as yeah. it should be. So hopefully, those of, uh, that, that can attend will. So. Roll call, please. Swedek? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Hambly? Yes. All right. Commissioners also uh, have accommodations for the following 16 students uh, for, on being chosen as outstanding senior by the uh, as outstanding seniors by the Medina County Share Cluster for 2022. Jessica Jessica Bissasar, Kevin uh, Bittaker, Jared Bradford, Kaya uh, Bundy, Rachel Emmert, James Feeks IV, Caitlin Fortuna, Ava Latham, Nicole Lawrence, Allison McCall, Morgan Metz. Olivia Ortiz, Victoria Smith, Addison Town, Hannah Wypasik, and Benjamin Young. Um, these are all individuals that will be recognized at the Share Cl Cluster Breakfast, I believe, on Friday, and um, we want to recognize them as part of that. All right. Um, we do have a notice of a liquor permit filing. Uh, we've noticed for new liquor permit request from Ohio Springs Incorporated doing business as Sheets Convenience Store, located at 5100 Ridge Road, Granger Township. Uh, this is for a D1 permit class, beer only for on-premises consumption or in original sealed containers for carryout only until uh, 1 a.m. Uh, we're not requesting a hearing, it's just a notice is being provided for the record. All right. Um, Next, open for public comment. Anyone here want to make comment? Seeing none, okay, well, we'll go ahead and transition right to discussion session. Open it up, uh, Scott. I have a couple of things uh, to discuss. Uh, first, just a quick update on the courthouse. Um, we're currently about nine and a half million dollars into it. Um, the steel is complete, um, except for the steel on this connector on the south, uh, connecting to the 1969 courthouse. Um, st studded installation is ongoing on the west and the east. Uh, sheathings on the north side, as you can, well, you can't see it from here, but you can see it from um, other parts of the building. Um, the layout on the second floor continues. The sprayer and fireproofing uh, is uh, continuing on the first floor. The concrete block and the detention areas on the third and first floor are uh, is currently being built. Uh, it's completed on the second and fourth floors. The uh, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, uh, they're working on hanging the supports on the first floor. Uh, they're currently installing storm piping on the fourth floor for the roof drains. The roofing vapor barrier uh, for the temporary roof is continuing. Um, and they are currently framing the first floor. The uh, schedule of uh, the facade uh, is to start um, on the 21st of April, um, weather permitting. The uh, roofing should be complete in July. Uh, we're still looking at the courthouse completion on December 1st, with the old courthouse final completion on June 28th. Uh, the weather has caused some delay, but uh, they do continue moving forward. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we've got the uh, volunteer energy. Um, Scott, before you yeah. move on, so after they get the uh, exterior um, enclosed, mm -hmm. could we arrange a tour so that we could oh, absolutely. go through it? Okay. Yeah, any, anytime you want to walk through, just let me know and we'll get you okay. over there and walk through. Um, I, I, I was talking to a, a, a contractor who had said that if we had waited like six months, he, when he was, he's been pricing and looking at some things. We probably would have paid like anywhere between 15 to 20 percent more yeah. for everything and, we were and doing. On top and, of and the great interest rate that's got like the bond. Exactly. I, it just, it's just amazing the timing that yeah, you know, it, it came in. Really we'd good waited timing. any time at all. We would really been. Um, Cloverleaf is in the process of doing right. it in school. Yes. Yeah. And, and 
they have experienced delays of up to a year in yeah. order to get steel. That's right. And the, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, it's amazing how supply chain is affected. Construction. It really is now, yeah, we've gone to a point from, yeah, just to mm -hmm. increase cost to not even sure when you can start. Right. right. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah we, we've had one delay, and that's with the cooling unit for the data center in yeah. the building. Yeah. Um, we had ordered it, um, but we they, they've come back and they've told us it's 52 weeks. So wow. we're, we're still planning to move in, but we're going to probably have to use yeah. um, temporary cooling, temporary cooling units area. until, so it'll be about yeah four or five months of temporary cooling, then we'll get the... It's, it's just amazing months. we're able to stay pretty much on time mm -hmm. right. in yeah. this environment. It really is. That's it is. I thank agree. You. Yeah. Um, so Volunteer Energy, um, as I mentioned, they, they did file for bankruptcy. Uh, we're getting the bids and proposals for the aggregation program. Mm -hmm. um, that also affects the county buildings because we were in the CCAO program, uh, natural gas for the county buildings. Mm -hmm. So Palmer Energy is working on finding uh, another provider uh, for that. The um, Heather Hedge property, uh, we did receive the agreement from uh, Weber Murphy Fox. And so I'm going through that. And so hopefully I'll have that on uh, resolution for next week. So that's all I have. Thank Any you. Any more word on some of that EMA stuff from the prosecutor's office yet? Um, as far as? as the governance uh, documents governance, that were needed yes. oh. uh, regarding the organization no. and no, membership. I've, I've not heard anything from the prosecutor's office regarding. Because Mike Lyons was going to make some recommendations to us. Yeah. Yeah, I've not heard anything. I'll okay. follow up with Mike and okay. see if uh, he's done anything with that. All right. Okay, thank Very you. Good. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Scott. All right. Uh, Amy, do you have anything for us? Stephen? Okay. Holly? Jeremy? Believe it or not, we got nothing. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Shocking. Shocking. I cannot, That's unusual. I cannot believe that. <laughs> make, sure, make sure this part of the program is, is recorded. Yeah, really? <laughs> Put it on loop. Uh -huh. Sorry. <laughs> Anyone, any, um, Beth, anything more? John, anything? Okay. Um, Bill? Uh, we have a tour scheduled for this afternoon of the MCUC, Madan County University Center campus, oh, yeah. oh, okay. with the um, mm -hmm. sheriff and EMA All right. uh, to look at it from a training standpoint. Um, good. So that uh, hopefully will uh, result in something good. Um, and then from a NOACA standpoint, uh, NOACA is working on a climate uh, strategy. And um, I got the first draft of a report last week, and it continually refers to a climate emergency. And I have probed them to find out exactly what that means. So okay. it, uh, more to follow on that one. But uh, it's, it's, it seems okay. like it's typical of, of, uh, of, of NOACA's approach to things, that mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. is an emergency. So, okay. I guess we'll I'll give you see. updates on that. Appreciate it. All right, <laughs> Colleen. Nothing. I'm going to share a cluster, and you're going to farmers, though, right? I will go to Farm Bureau. Correct. And I'll be at the cluster as well. Okay. Yeah, share cluster. So, all right. Uh, nothing else. I know we don't have any requests for executive session, so I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Move to second. Hey. Roll call, please. Swedek. Yes. Hudson. Yes. Hambly. Uh, yes, everybody have a good day, good week, and we will have sunnier days.